All right, in this video, we'll give a relationship between integral domains and fields. It starts with this theorem. So let R be commutative. Multiplication is a commutative operation. Then R is an integral domain. And remember, an integral domain means that if you ever have A times B equaling zero, then either A or B has to be zero. So we have an integral domain if and only if a b equals a c means b equals c if a is non-zero. So this is a rule we got comfortable with in our experience with mathematics. It holds if and only if we have an integral domain. This is called the cancellation law. So let's prove it. So I'm going to first assume r is an integral domain. So if we have a b equals a c with a not zero, then I can subtract a c on both sides. So I get a b minus a c is zero. Subtraction is legal in any ring. Additionally, the distributive laws hold. So this is a times b minus c equals zero. That's true in any ring. But in an integral domain, if I have two things multiplied together that give me zero, then one of the numbers has to be zero. It's not a, because we specifically said a is not zero. So the conclusion is that b minus c has to be zero. And we have b equals c, showing the cancellation law holds. Let's go the other way. Now I'm going to assume the cancellation law holds. I want to show I have an integral domain. So let's say that I have a times b equaling 0. And let's say a is not 0. Hopefully, b has to be equal to 0 to be an integral domain. But then what we have is a, b, that's 0. That's the same as a times 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So now cancellation laws can kick in. I can cancel the a, and I can find b equals 0. So that proves that I have an integral domain. All right, so there's the end of that proof. The relationship between integral domains and fields is this. Every finite integral domain is a field. Remember what the definition of a field is. A field is a commutative division ring. So a commutative ring where I could divide by any number except for zero. So every non-zero element in my field has a multiplicative inverse. So here's the proof. So I have a ring R and it's a finite integral domain. So I have a zero in my ring. Every ring has a zero. For us, our rings have unity, so we have a one in the ring. Then I got a bunch of other elements in my ring, but finite. Let this be my integral domain. I need to prove that I have a field. So I'm going to take an element A in R, A not 0. I, I hope that A has an inverse, a multiplicative inverse. So I want A times some other element in my ring to give me 1.
The way that I can get this is by looking at a times every non-zero number in my ring. So look at a times one, a times r1, a times r2, up to a times rn. I claim these are distinct. These ring elements are all different. Why? If you ever had like a r i equaling a r j, so if two of these things on my list happen to be equal, then the cancellation laws hold. That's what we proved in this previous theorem. If I have an integral domain, then the cancellation laws hold. I can cancel the a. a is not zero. So I have r i has to equal r j. If i and j are different, that doesn't happen. Lightning bolt, that's the contradiction. So I have all these distinct elements in my ring. My ring is finite. That means one of them has to be one. So one of them, so sum a r i has to equal one because one has to appear somewhere on this list. It's all the elements in my ring. There, I have the multiplicative inverse. So a inverse exists. It's equal to this ri. There, that's the proof. I have to have a field. All right, wonderful.